So thanks for joining us, Heather. It's a pleasure meeting you. And I just got to know that you landed last evening and just been a very busy morning to start with. Thanks for joining in. Really happy to be here. So we're here for Safer with Google, right? Uh, I mean, Google has been an integral part of everybody growing up and also today. So how is Google trying to make safety a priority? Because it's an integral part of anything, you know, safety, security, something that be it relationships, be it work, be it anything, safety is one of the most important part. What is Google doing about that? Well, we believe the, the best internet experience is a safe one. And we've been pitching this idea for a long time that when you use technology, it should be safe by default. Yeah. Um, you shouldn't have to be an expert in everything about cybersecurity or online safety to use the technology safely. So we've really spent some time thinking about how do we build the product in such a way that when you as a user use it, you have less and less that you have to think about and you're more confident in the technology that you're using. Absolutely, that's so true. I mean, uh, we have all these classes, we have all these uh, you know, tutorials talking about safety, cybersecurity and everything. And I think Google has also been really pushing it and trying to teach you things with Safer with Google. But what's Google's biggest message for India today when it comes to online safety? Well, we think that the uh, most important thing that people should be focused on is using the technology for what they, yeah. they need, right? It, it's serving a purpose in their life. And what we want to do is add into that experience, um, if, if something is happening that's fraudulent against you or malicious against you, we want to be able to get ahead of that. Yeah. So for example, um, we've shown over 41 million alerts in GPay alone on fraudulent uh, kind of scams against people. And uh, this kind of uh, messaging in the moment when it happens is really impactful in helping people make the right choice about um, whether they want to approve an app or approve a, a transaction. So when you talk about these 41 million uh, alerts that people got on GPay, what mm -hmm. kind of alerts and how were they based on? What kind of information were they kind of learning from and telling you that it's a phishing or a scam? Mm. So behind the scenes, we are always studying what threat actors do, what okay. threats look like. And so if a, uh, a scam comes in, maybe it's a phishing message trying to trick you into uh, sending money, um, that may match a pattern of ours. And in okay. fact, not just pattern matching, but artificial intelligence based yeah. uh, scam detection. And so that is becoming more and more uh, sophisticated all the time. Mm -hmm. We're constantly improving those models so that these alerts are even more sophisticated relative to the threat. Now that you mentioned AI, I wanted to check like how, like AI is definitely transforming India and the world, mm. but it's also creating new threats. What's the top risk Google is preparing for with AI? Well, I think it's important to remember that all technology comes with benefits and yeah. downsides. And I like to say to people, when we harnessed fire for the first time, yeah. it helped us with cooking, but you could also burn your, your neighbor's house down. Burn the world out, to be honest. Exactly. Um, so all technology, we have to think about um, how it can be used for good and how it can be used for bad. With AI, we think first and foremost, it's gonna be overwhelmingly transformative yeah. for all society. Um, from medicine to um, kind of car manufacturing, yep. batteries, et cetera. So we know that there's a benefit there we really want to harness, but we have to do it responsibly. We are seeing the threat actors adopt artificial intelligence for scams, yep. no surprise. No and surprise. it's a productivity improvement for enterprise, but it's a productivity improvement for them as well. Yep. So what we've done is we've started studying how this technology could be used in that way and then begin the research to understand how could we constrain it. Uh, one of the interesting things we've done, for example, is something called Synth ID. Okay. And that allows us to watermark good content when it's generated. This is kind of video content, That's if you great. will. Um, and that watermarking gives us an assurance that at least that content is good. You could then compare something, for example, if you weren't sure if it was synthetically generated. So it shows as a watermark on the videos, so you can be sure about it. Yeah, so the idea here is to be able to uh, integrate it flexibly and send the right signal to the user, uh, for example. I also, I mean, talking about these watermarking, I think YouTube as a platform is also promoting that if you used AI in your videos, you just do that tick a check mark that mm. you've used AI so that people know that it's AI generated or you've used mm. AI tools. And mm. that's also kind of making a safety clause that, you know, it's AI generated video and not for a real video. Exactly, because yeah. we all want to be able to do AI generated content. Yeah. I mean, imagine um, being six years old and being able to make a movie, movie and how, yes. how, how powerful that would be that in, is so in storytelling. Yeah. 
Um, and we all want to manipulate our own content too, right? True. In your vacation photos, you want to yeah. remove the stranger in the background. Yeah. So yeah. this is technology we all do want to use, but we also want to balance that with um, being able to recognize in real time if it's if it's harmful. Absolutely. Yeah. So in 2025, what does being safe online mean for average Indian user or, you know, overall? So we think in the India ecosystem, which is very vibrant, and uh, there, there's so much transformative technology happening here in India, um, we want people to be safe by yeah. default and to be able to trust that uh, the messages they're receiving, the apps that they install, the transactions they make every day, you know, billions and billions of these transactions are happening. Being safe online means trusting that those transactions were good ones. Yeah, that's so true. So on the safety charter now, what are the core pillars of the new Google safety charter for India's AI-led digital journey? So the safety charter for India reflects uh, three areas that we think are really important at the moment. Dealing with online fraud and scams, okay. first and foremost so that you get that safe online experience. Uh, secondly, uh, core cybersecurity for enterprises, for government, uh, for small to medium sized businesses, uh, you should be able to run your organization safely online. And thirdly, uh, as part of the AI transformation, making sure that we understand how to build responsible AI mm -hmm. and that India is ready to do that transformation in the most responsible and safe way as possible and having the tools to be able to do that. So we're very excited about the charter. We're very excited uh, to see that uh, manifest through the launch of what we call our Google Security uh, Engineering Center, GSEC. Oh, yeah. GSEC, yeah. 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 And um, to be able to really bring people together from all over India, partner with us and understand, you know, how do we do these things for India? Great, so it's like an ecosystem of all these things together. Yes, the internet is um, a, a coalition of the of willing, course, as they say. Course, yeah. So good to get people together. Yeah. So how is Google adapting its global safety and AI ethics framework specifically for India's unique challenges like language diversity, digital literacy, and scale? Mm -hmm. Because that is important. Scale is very important, yeah. as we know, uh, uh, with, with India. And uh, what we're finding is that everywhere globally that we have conversations on these topics, uh, one thing is true, everybody's very excited. Yeah. Um, and then we find there's regional differences, country level differences. And in a place like India, you also have state level differences. Yeah. yeah. And so it's important that the technology be localized and that if we're gonna do training or refinement, that we can do that at a local level to reflect what's happening locally, the history, the culture. Yeah. And so it's important for us to partner here locally in India to make sure that we are um, sort of getting people on the ground who are experts and sort of understanding how it should be developed here. That's true. So is this charter just a roadmap for Google or are there collaborative elements with the Indian government, startups mm -hmm. and the civil society? Absolutely. Um, well, we have a long history of partnering yeah. locally, which is great. And so we think that the safety charter and then you know, imminently uh, a, a GSEC it re really uh, is a permanent mm -hmm. fixture over the long term for us to do this work. We're excited, for example, to do um, partnerships locally for training and awareness. Um, we've been reaching out and doing training for senior citizens, for example, yeah. on these online yeah. frauds yeah. and scams. Um, cyber clinics yeah. with uh, small to medium sized businesses to bring cyber skills to to business owners and business yeah. operators, and also partnering with the government on important initiatives, um, whether it's combating fraud and scams. Um, we've been training government officials so that as they do the work uh, for the country, yeah. that they're bringing a cyber mindset to the job as well. No, that's true because I feel that uh, in, uh, Google has been an integral part of Digital India, the whole mm. uh, program led by Prime Minister Modi the Digital India program. And I think Google has been an integral part of it and how it has been training the government officials, like you mentioned, and all of that, because I met a few senior officials and they were talking about how you guys train, how to make their devices secure, mm -hmm. even as simple as how to know that emails that are coming through are you know, not phishing scams and all of that. So yeah, that's great. So now something on uh, you know the personal 
first of all ai and uh, cyber security in india so we'll talk about that mm. now ai is reshaping how threats operate from scams to misinformation how is google's engineering involving in this response so one of the things we have to do is really study how these threats happen yeah and uh, so we have uh, teams all over the globe who study uh, global and regional level disparities in terms of how the threat actors are operating turns out uh, scams are very regionalized in terms mm -hmm. of how they sure. operate and uh, very much tied to culture in, yeah. in many ways. And, and actually, this makes it difficult for, I don't know, someone in Antarctica to do a, a scam in India, right? Because yeah. you, you don't have the cultural connection to the people. So it's important for us to partner locally and to have a GSEC in a place like India, mm -hmm. because you really do have to be here to see what's happening sure. and to, to understand why as well. And then we can go back and bake that into the technology to make the platforms more safe relative to the threat. Um, we've been doing that work for a long time. We've been doing that work here in India. Um, we think uh, per making that more permanent and even more deeply integrated is, is very, very important. Yeah, that's cool. And now deepfakes, that's something that I feel is the major problem. With deepfakes and generative AI tools becoming widespread, what specific protection is Google building for Indian creators and users? Well, I mentioned um, that we've been working on Synth, technology yeah. called SynthID. Yeah. And this is going to be a long journey in understanding um, how people are going to accept synthetic content yeah. into their lives. I think when it first came on the scene, everyone thought we should just ban it because Ooh. nobody would want it. But actually, we want it for good in our lives yeah. um, and fun yeah. uh, and, and to make the technology useful. Um, I've also been very interested to watch people react to deep fakes. And there's almost now a growing digital awareness of yeah. question everything you see. That's that's probably a good instinct. That is, yeah. You know, even even for written text True. and just information processing, uh, the, the critical thinking skills yeah. um, in an online ecosystem. But I do think that, you know, we will, you know, we have lots of research into this and we will see over the coming years that culturally the way people use the internet will change. Mm -hmm. Some of it will be because we can give them really good signals, yeah. like a watermark, um, or you'll be able to mark your content mark, mark as, it, yeah. you know, synthetic. Yeah. Um, and then we may see the opposite as well. We may start to see people really love organic, like raw movie Hopefully footage. That <laughs> yes. Um, and so we will have to, as societies, be very flexible yeah. uh, in how we want that used. But um, we're still in the very early days of this technology and constantly learning. But it's evolving so quickly, it's just kind of scary sometimes and overwhelming for sure. Mm -hmm. That's true. Yes, more more quickly probably than any technology. Any technology, right? I think the every, quantum leap that has taken with yeah. Every yeah. week, there's something new. That's true. Yeah. So how does Google ensure that small businesses and first-time digital users, a huge part of India's internet ecosystem, mm -hmm. aren't left vulnerable? Well, I think if um, you're starting a business today, mm -hmm. you have safer solutions to build your business with than ever before. There are more products. Um, just available generally with which to do that, we think it's important to put security into those products by default. So if you're a new business and you're setting up on Google Workspace, Google Cloud, um, you're making an app for Android apps, we want that whole developer ecosystem to have all of the safeguards by default so you don't have to think about it. Um, for example, if you get a Google Workspace account, you can have all of your employees have MFA, yeah. multi-factor authentication by right. default, um, even the most secure version of it, which is a security key. Yeah. Um, and that is going to solve a lot of problems for you, like phishing. True. And that's something that you as a business then don't have to worry about. So if we can do enough of that in the technology by default as new users come online or new businesses come online, then they're going to get the security for free. That's true, yeah. Now on the platform safety, what's Google approach to safety when it comes to minors, women, and marginalized communities online in India? Well, I think the online safety issues, um, you know, whether you are a, a minority group, uh, marginalized women, uh, children, children um, is, you know, one of these user journeys that we have to study. And uh, again, we see this phenomenon 
exhibit differently all over the world, yeah. just depending on culture, depending on local um, considerations. One of the things we've tried to do is to be very explicit, for example, when thinking about how kids use technology, um, they're using technology to expand and enhance their learning in many cases. Yeah. And we want to kind of constrain that environment in the right kind of way and also give parents mm -hmm. um, agency as part of that process. So a lot of our products are really designed around this idea of um, kind of parental controls, yeah. uh, making sure that the content is appropriate and really giving parents choice. Something as simple as YouTube Kids, to be honest, you know, how exactly. it uh, kind of screens everything and only content that is suitable for children screens on your screen and thing else so yeah exactly and sometimes yeah. you do need that kind of constrained environment that's a very different experience than say for marginalized communities yeah. and women um, again there i think it's important to partner locally to understand the issues and to make sure that if for example if we're doing training for ai models that we're including the training in a particular language or uh, sort of including materials that would help the model become more intelligent about whatever cultural yes. differences there yeah. might be as well. Great. Okay. Now, this is something that I really am close to. So India has a massive creator economy mm. from YouTubers to small influencers. How is Google ensuring their accounts, content and identities remain secure? So today, if you sign up for a Gmail account, which um, uh, is kind of the core identity as yes, part of all of, of our course. products. Uh, we encourage you to turn multi-factor authentication on by default. Yeah. Yeah. And you can do increasingly secure multi-factor authentication, not just like an SMS code, yeah, yeah. but also pass keys yeah. or security keys. Or the Google Authenticator, yeah. Or the Google Authenticator app. Yeah. Um, so that's number one. We think the the account needs to be protected. Yeah. Behind the scenes, we're also processing signals all the time, looking for threats, trying to attack your account. Mm -hmm. um, and if we see something, we will alert you to that. And we think that kind of automated system behind the scenes is really helpful, Yeah. especially if the user isn't necessarily an expert True. in safety or cybersecurity. So that's that's one example that by default we want to do this for you so you can get on with doing the creating. Yeah, do your thing yeah. and not worry about safety and not security. Not have to worry about it. Yeah. Now, just on the future roadmap, mm -hmm. can you share a glimpse into the kind of AI safety tools or user focused features Google might launch in India soon? So we've had AI safety features on for a long time. Yeah. Um, Gmail today, 99.9% .9 of all spam and fraud is removed from the inbox. That's been an AI model for over a decade, <laughs> a very long time. Um, and similarly, we run uh, about 100 billion Android apps through yeah. AI classifiers uh, okay. all the time and looking for patterns in Android apps that might be malicious. We want to remove those. And similarly for Chrome extensions. Yeah. So we think those kinds of things are really powerful. and. Again, building AI into the backend systems to identify threats. So this is kind of always an ongoing threat protection system um, that that is available. And then in our cloud products for enterprises, um, we're building increasingly sophisticated tools that enterprises can deploy to protect themselves uh, in their security operations as well. Great. So, and finally, as a security engineer and AI leader yourself, mm. what's one misconception people still have about online safety? Um, this is a good question. <laughs> um, you know, I, I when I talk to my colleagues in the industry, and we've we've all been doing this for twenty or thirty years, um, I think there is a sense that there is a silver bullet that there's what you know. If only we could invent this one thing. <laughs> Um, all of our security problems would go away. If only we could teach all the users to know everything. And not keep their password as password. Yeah. And, and, and set good <laughs> passwords. Um, I, I think that's a misconception. I will say, though, that I am more hopeful than ever because we have large language models that as we start to integrate that into the right places, some of this does become a lot easier. Yeah. And if you're a security professional today, you are sitting on top of a treasure trove of data in your enterprise True. that if we could process at scale, we could really help you do the job a lot easier. And so 
I think there's hope. There's hope. All right. Hope. Thank you so much for joining us, Ella. It was great talking to you. Thanks for having me. Pleasure. Thank you. Thanks.